The Chicago Bulls, the Chicago White Sox, and Chicago Blackhawks move to stadium may not be happening as they may be moving to a different network. We're going to talk a little bit about that and how that could impact a lot of the people working for NBC Chicago and just how we watch Bulls games next season. We're also going to look at DeMar DeRozan being listed as one of the players most likely to get overpaid next season and why the Chicago Bulls cannot allow themselves to be that team. And then lastly, we're going to look at and talk a little bit about can the Chicago Bulls look at a different position other than center in this year's draft. We're going to get into all that and more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. What's going on, Bulls fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. I'm the host, Terry Hayes, but more importantly, you guys can follow the channel at Bull Central Pod on every social media platform we happen to be on. With that being said, Let's go ahead and get into the content for today. So I want to talk about the Chicago Bulls, uh, the Blackhawks, and the White Sox, and who's going to be, you know, airing their games next season. So we talked a little bit about, it's probably about a month ago at this point, how the, uh, the those teams' contract with NBC Chicago had run out. Now, they had an option to renew it for six months, which would have basically kept them, uh, those teams, on that on that platform for the 2024-25 season. But it seems like the, Bull, the Bulls, the Blackhawks, and the Sox have made their decision. Uh, it was reported yesterday by The Athletic that the, that the those teams will partner with the Standard Media Group, um, and that's a company that's based out of Nashville. And Nashville is a is, is where we do know Reinsdorf does have um, you know some some connections at right. The the Bulls, I believe their their practice recently was in was it in Nashville? Yeah, it was in Nashville. Their uh the way that they opened training camp was in Nashville this year in Memphis, but I believe it was Nashville. And so now that you know the Chicago Sun Times had initially reported that when the Bulls uh, contract ended with NBC Sports Chicago. They would move over to Stadium, which is a network that Jerry Reinsdorf did buy a little bit ago. And they have actually built that network up before. Well, on Saturday, The Athletic reported that they actually will partner with Stadium Media Group. And that, that's that company based out of Nashville to create a whole new network, uh, which will be uh, over the air. Now, Stadium is also mainly online. So, you know, maybe they're still working it in that way. But it's going to be in agreement with cable and streaming services. So nothing's been confirmed right now. So this is all speculative, uh, generated by the athletic, and we know that they have been hit or missed before. Um, so I want to make sure that 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 that's there. Now, if this is the move, right, and that it is going to go with this new standard media group rather than stadium, what does that mean for you know with for stadium, which Jerry Reinsdorf is an owner of, right? Um, and and you know, so that's a little bit weird, right? And then also stadium would have already had to like go after some regional sports networks to convert to their, to their service. So, um, you know, I think the standard media group would have to do similar things, but I'm going to enter a different aspect and perspective on this, right? We've seen stadium before, which is that, that company that we talked about is that they provide services for other teams. So if standard media group is the company that's going to be acquiring these channels to to form this this network so to say right it could be very well that stadium still is the company that's going to provide the talent the on-air talent to air over those networks so you you see similar things uh like that with like espn uh, sh- uh radio in chicago right they're actually it's it's a company called good karma brands that actually provides a lot of those on-air radio hosts they license the name from espn and then some of those guys do go on to work actually at espn on some of their broadcast things so there's a lot of different layers to this but ultimately the thing that comes about this the biggest part of this is the fact that the the bulls and Sox and, and blackhawks are, seem to be they're not going to be on NBC Chicago in 2024-25. And I had speculated the last time that we talked about this topic that, you know, they're probably going to extend that contract just to kind of make everything a little bit more seamless, give time to build up that network. But maybe now it goes to the point where that maybe that's not the case, right? And then maybe we do see, because the contract ends in October, which is right before the start of the season, so we could run into a situation where all throughout the offseason, the preseason even, we're still getting NBC Sports Chicago coverage, and then that immediately flips over towards the, the end of that month, right? And when the season starts, which you you typically don't see some, you typically see a clean cut. So it's going to be, uh, it's, it's definitely a shift that's happening. And I think we're going to see that not only for a lot of teams, but you're going to see this across sports is that, you know, streaming rights, networks, broadcast, things like that to give the bigger piece of the pie. These things are all coming together. 
and and it's going to be what paints this. And so, you know, NBC Sports Chicago has been around for so long, right? You look at the guys that we all know there, Casey Johnson, Tony Gill, Stacey and Adam, I believe, are technically contracted with NBC Sports Chicago, um, which a lot of those guys may be moving over, so we still get at least Stacey and Adam. I just don't see them uh, coming down. You know, those guys were ranked, I think, there's a uh, a national list of the best team uh, announcers and uh, our commentary teams. And Stacey and Adam, if I'm not mistaken, were like fourth or fifth on that list. Um, so, you know, we they understand what they have in those guys, right? And that's maybe maybe some people do look at it as a opportunity as well to retire. That could be something. I'm not, again, nothing that I've heard, anything like that. This is me just talking my thoughts. This is not reporting by any stretch of the imagination. So please. Make sure you guys take that. I'm not reporting on anything. I don't know nothing. I don't know nothing. I, I know a little. I don't know nothing. Um, but no, it just it comes down to that. So it, it's going to be a change. They will. I mean, it's still going to be on TV. It's not like it's going to be any type of risk where anybody's not going to be able to watch Bulls games. That's definitely not going to happen. But it's just the way that it's presented, the company that's doing it now. And, you know, they may bring their own mindset and thoughts to how they want to also do that, do that coverage. So. You know, it, it, it's going to be fun to watch and see, you know, change. This seems to be an offseason of change for the Bulls, both on the court and maybe off the court as well. But let me know what you guys think in hearing that. Like I said, it's the athletic. Some, they, they've been hit or miss, right, as with everyone. I'm not trying to come left at them or anything about, oh, they're, they're just lying. It's false. I'm not saying that. They could be very spot on. It could be a mixture of some things. It could be something that was floated around but maybe not happening. It could be a lot of different permutations. But one thing you can bet on for sure is that, we're going to cover it right here on Chicago Bull Central, so you ain't got to worry about if you're going to know. If it happens, you guys will know about it because guess what? Hayes is going to report on it. So there you guys go. I got I got you all covered. You ain't got to go nowhere else. Hit the subscribe button, and I'll make sure you guys stay up to date on all the news uh, covering the Chicago Bulls. But with that said, let's get back to what's going to affect the basketball court for the Bulls. And I want to talk about DeMar DeRozan. Um, and he was listed uh, on the list of, of an article of, of players that are most likely to get overpaid this offseason. And you guys know I've talked a lot about DeMar DeRozan in his contract situation uh, basically since the end of the season, maybe even a little bit before then. And I, I, DeMar DeRozan is a player where you guys know I understand the impact that DeMar DeRozan has. I do. He's played great. He's coming here and done basically exactly what the Bulls wanted and needed him to do. There's no question above that. When you look at uh, prior, oh, for the most part, the, the almost the majority of DeMar DeRozan's career He's been, uh, his teams have scored better when he's off the court than on the court, except for the Chicago Bulls. Over the last three years, the Bulls are plus uh, 0 0.4 with him on the court and minus 1.4 with him off the court. He's had an impact for the Chicago Bulls team that's undeniable, right? But then you get into the details of it. He's going to be 35 before the start of the season. And while we, DeMar DeRozan, we know he can score in the fourth quarter, he can get to the free throw line, his defense is getting worse and worse and worse. He is one of the most, I mean, the, one of the worst minus defenders in the game of basketball. And the fact that he's not a reliable or a volume three-point shooter definitely hurts that as well. And so while I've always said that there is a price that's definitely worth, no questions asked, of, of, with DeMar DeRozan staying here, there's a price that makes it worthy of that. But the Bulls cannot overpay for a guy that's going into 35 that the Bulls haven't had. And again, it's not all on DeMar DeRozan, but you have to ask yourself, how much can we realistically improve this team in the time that DeMar is still going to be an impact player? And make no mistake about it, despite what, even with my doubts and criticisms on DeMar DeRozan, he's still a player that makes an impact for you. You can't deny that. If you just don't think DeMar makes any impact at all, come on now. We, you you got to be tripping on that one. So, you know, DeMar has had a really fun Bulls career. Now, it's not been fun because of the results on the court from all these teams, right, from the teams, right? But when you look at just that first year, Finishing in, in uh, getting an MVP voting, right, and having having that, it's he's having one of the best three year stretches of his NBA career. You cannot deny that. That that's what he's had. This is at, at this age, he's having one of the best stretches of his career. But then you also have to look at what is your roster telling you, right? Can you can you change this roster? And do you do you even want to? Should you want to change your roster to best fit a thirty five year old small forward shooting guard, small forward? Or do you want to go the way that these young, these younger players are starting to tell you that it's time to start building the roster? And that's what AK and Eversley really have to ask themselves this summer when it comes to DeMar DeRozan. You cannot, in my opinion, overpay for DeMar. Has he earned it? Yeah. I've said that. I'm always going to maintain that. DeMar DeRozan has earned 
whatever he gets, whether it's $25 million, whether it's $40 million, he's earned it, whatever. But that doesn't mean it has to come from the Chicago Bulls. And I get that Bulls fans have this thing of, well, DeMar's been our best player. What are we going to be without DeMar? Well, that's the thing. You may need to find out. That's the thing, right? Especially when you look at what we have and the best chances that we have to really, really improve the team. Sometimes that comes through taking your medicine and sucking for a little while. Um, so, you know, we'll see what it means, right? And we'll see what the Bulls, all this talk and speculation for me really means nothing. The biggest and best evaluation uh, and that's going to that's gonna determine this has to come from AK and Eversley. How do they view the situation with DeMar DeRozan? So, you know, when you when you look at this and you look at this list, right, this is this is, I think, a pretty fair list of players that are probably most likely to get overpaid. Now, they have Isaac Okoro on there. He's a restricted free agent. I don't know if I believe in that one. Uh, he's number five. You got Tobias Harris, which Tobias Harris, almost anything above the mid-level exception is overpaid for Tobias Harris. Tobias, he has some really good flashes, man. But it's like, what are we doing, Tobias, bro? What are we doing, man? Like, he averaged 8.8 .8 points in the, in the postseason on 25% shooting from three-point range. He, yeah, God, man, just don't pay for overpay for Tobias Harris. You had James Harden at number three. He's probably going to get overpaid, especially by that Clippers team. His partner in Paul George, also there at number two. And then you had DeMar DeRozan listed as number one, the most likely player to get overpaid this offseason. And they don't mean necessarily to stay with their teams. There are options that other teams do that. So let me ask you guys this question. And I asked it about P. Will, and a lot of great conversation came out of it. So I'm going to flip it and ask it about DeMar DeRozan as well. What is the contract that you think would be fair for DeMar DeRozan via where this team is, where they look like they're going to go? Um, what do you think is a fair contract that you, that you think that you would be comfortable signing DeMar DeRozan on? If I had to answer that question myself, um, in objectivity, I would say, man, because the value is there. 22 to 25 million over two or three years, I think, is something that you can reasonably talk yourself into. Um, it kind of sets those contracts up to where by the time that comes, you'll have Lonzo coming off, things like that, if you do move Zach Levine. But I mean, uh, does that even mean anything? We heard that the Bulls offered two years, 40 million per, right? And he turned that down. So that all kind of points towards this guy is, is, is going to get overpaid, especially if it's staying here in Chicago. And, uh, yeah, I guess we'll just see what comes of that. But let me know what you guys think and all that down below. All right, the last topic I want to talk about before we go is what do the Chicago Bulls do in the draft? Now, a lot of people, we're, get, we're gearing up for a draft coverage. It's coming soon, so you're going to get more draft-like topics here on Chicago Bulls Central here for the next week or so. But the common thought is center, right? We all know that we need a center. We actually had a roundtable discussion over on Chi-Town Sports Central kind of talking about the center position. There, Steve-O had brought up, you know, free agent centers, Nick Claxton, Isaiah Hartenstein, right, are some players that are out there in that free agent pool for the Chicago Bulls to really go after and look at. Um, Mo, Mo, uh, Mo Wagner as well as one. But then you have the centers that are coming up in this draft. They offer a kind of cost-effective way to get some young athletic center in here that could bring a lot of what the Bulls do need. Um, but the question that you have to ask yourself is that, once again, this is an AK brand team and that we've seen him buck at tradition, tradition, uh, quite a bit. And so you got to ask yourself is, could the Bulls go a different route? A lot of mock drafts, not, not, not all of them, the majority still do have the Bulls going after centers of like Ke uh, Keech and, 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 um, and uh, what's Donovan Klingon, Khalil Ware, right? Some of the players that I, that I already plan on covering. But then there's some that still have the Bulls going point guard um, and things like that. And so here's the thing that I'm going to say. While a center makes the most sense, Right. Without knowing what we're going to do through free agency, without knowing what we're going to do with trade. And I still do hope that the Bulls do absolutely go center in this draft. Make no mistake about it. That's my personal opinion. I like a lot of the center prospects. But then again, that's mainly what I looked at. So maybe I've convinced myself into some of these centers. And we'll talk about that as I go through. That's why I go through so much tape. Um, but could the Bulls go a different position? Could they go point guard like some of these mocks have us going to where then you're getting your backup point guard for, for a while there? Right. And I think sometimes you can't overthink it. And going best player available, if you truly see that player as at having a huge, huge upside, superstar upside, you can never go wrong on that if they hit that, right? But if you have a position of need and you keep not addressing eventually, 
you're going to miss out on some really good prospects there. And that's what I don't want to see from the Chicago Bulls team. I don't want to see uh, AK kind of get, think too much on this one. Don't think too much on it, right? Think enough, right? Do your due diligence. Do your evaluation. We want you to do all of that. Bring every single bit of that. But don't overthink it. And so, you know, right now, it, it uh, like I said, it has a lot of the Bulls going a lot of different ways in it. Um, you know, some people even have us getting, what is it, Cody Williams, who's, a, who's more of a wing, things like that. But uh, I think ultimately when it comes down to it, the Bulls are going to have to, if they see a player that they really like, it may take them being aggressive. Does that mean um, going out on the trade market or something like that? It could, right? Um, you know, the, the mo- one of the mocks that I recently set, saw had the Bulls drafting Cody Williams at number three. I'm sorry, at number 11. Some drafts have him going in the top five, right? So if you're able to get that type of, of, of player and they fall to you at 11, people aren't going to really knock you for it. But then again, how do you still address the center position? Because unless you're just going to run it back with Andre Drummond and Nikola Vucevic again and then kick it off to the following offseason, Bulls fans are going to be upset by that. But then you got to make your decision. So this draft is going to be one to see if AK goes with what we've seen from him for a while, and that's going with the, 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 like that, that big potential talent, right? Really raw talent. Or is he going to go with somebody that's kind of a little bit more proven? I guess we'll see when it comes down to it. But with that said, we got two voicemails that were left over from the weekend I want to get into. This first one that we're going to get into is from, he calls himself Mr. Homeboy? We're going to get into that now. What's going on, Hayes? This is uh, Mr. Homeboy. Man, I was tapping in, man. I haven't left a voicemail in a minute. You know, I had to come support the channel, man. I'm proud of everything you're doing. Keep it going. I know the grind of being a YouTuber, that is hard, man. And whatever money you make from it, you deserve it because there's so much... There's so much work you have to go that people don't understand. But, man, I was calling in, man. I was freaking, I don't know, I'm probably one of the only ones that, that really think that the uh, DeMar and Zach situation can actually work together. I honestly think that in order for them to work, of course, you need a point guard. And I honestly think, like, yeah, Vucevic, he put up his numbers. But to be honest, Ben Donovan can run a, a guard heavy lineup. In order to let those guards go to work or actually develop Kobe, Io, whoever guards you have, in order to really develop them, I think you rather have a two defensive line defender centers. So have two centers like Andre Drummond that come in, give you rebounds, give you eight points a game, maybe give you two blocks and just instead of those shots that going to Vucevic, you could give those shots to Io, you give those shots to Kobe, give those shots to DeMar, bring in some snipers or whatever the case may be, and you actually can have a, a more modern offense. Because, yeah, you have Vucevic, but you don't really run plays with Vucevic in the post. Like, yeah, you could say that's on DeMar, but he's not even close to DeMar when it comes to scoring. And it, it's surprising to me that this team, with all the offensive, with all the offensive, talent that they have is still just a middle of pack offense. Like yeah, you could say it's DeMar mid range, slowing down everything, whatever the case may be. But you need DeMar when it comes to tight games, when it means like, hey, you need a go ahead bucket or hey, you need a, a bucket to slow down momentum. You need that on your team. And I, I mean I'm under the impression that if you pretty much take away those defensive we pretty much put a defensive center that don't need shots. Those shots can be going to the guards that we have and trying to develop. First of all, bro, like, real talk. Like, I know people use their nicknames on the voicemails, but are you using your Twitter? Mr. Homeboy? Is that what people are really walking around calling you? Mr. Use your name, my friend. I'm just, I'm just throwing jokes at you, brother. But here's what I'll say to your, to your question is that defensive centers, um, but with the more modern offense, See, that's the thing that the Bulls find themselves in a conundrum. Yes, you can find defensive centers that just rebound, block shots, you know, plays can, can rotate defensively. But I think that what we've seen is that you need centers nowadays that can at least go out to 12 to 15 feet. They don't always have to shoot a bunch of threes, right? We don't need that per se. So, and it, and it comes down to what type of, of offense are you really trying to run? If we're trying to run a more modern offense where we're also running quicker, I do think I do think that you know that type of center that can get out and transition things like that can finish around the rim could really help, especially if they're running with Io and Kobe things like that. So a center that doesn't need shots, I I get what you're getting at to just say, well, those more shots go to the guard, but then you also have to look at what keeps your offense predictable, and so that can even help you help other defenses pack it in. So you still need a center, in my opinion, that still can hit shots when needed, that you still can run offense to. Maybe you do find one that thrives and not necessarily needing a bunch of offense called for them. 
Um, but you still need one that when you when at times when you do need to call on them, they do have that solid pick and pop out to 12 to 15 feet, stuff like that. At least in my opinion, that's what I would like to see. But we're not going to get everything that we need. And sometimes we're going to have to adapt. And so I think that if we do get the more defensive minded center that you don't really call offense for that you called here, we got to get better shooting out on the perimeter, more consistent shooting out on the perimeter. And then that absolutely can work as well. So there's a lot of different avenues as far as what you need to bring here, and either way is going to have to come with changes made around the, the rest of the team as well. So very good insight there, brother. Thank you for that voicemail. I really appreciate you, and I promise I was just poking some fun with the name, brother. Thank you for calling in, man. All right, let's get into the last voicemail for today. This one's from Reggie. Hey, hey, this is Reginald from Columbus, Georgia. Uh, I was just thinking about that uh, trade offer. You ran somewhere with the Lakers with uh, Rory or the Gates. Vanderbilt and d and I'm not going to lie, I hate it. I hate the idea of it. I hate anyone even put that out there in the air because even though I like Vanderbilt and I think he'd be great on this team, to me he's like a bigger version of Javante Green who goes out there and plays the energy. At worst, he's going to get 8-8 eight eight, as long as he's healthy. But gave this gave the Lakers nothing. He said the whole year hurt. d I mean, I even need to say it. That's just way too uh, advantageous for the Lakers, to be honest. Even if they throw in a 2029 20, first round pick, they wouldn't, the Bulls really wouldn't get nothing out of that deal. So if there was going to be a deal with the Lakers, it would have to involve Vanderbilt and Rory. They're not going to give an Austin that part. But I just, yeah, this idea of it, like, just made me upset. But, uh, thanks. Oh, uh, what's your opinion? Uh, on the Kendrick Lamar break, uh, just you, just this man. I just got done listening to Graham, so I just, hey, give me your opinion on that. Thanks. All right. Um, here's the thing that I'll say with this. You say, what do we get from that deal? And we, this is the thing you got to think big picture. Every, you're not gonna get everything right away that you want in the in a Zach Levine trade because of what his trade value seems to be. Right as of right now, that's what I'm saying. We'll see if that changes once teams are actually able to start talking. We may hear some updated, you know, rumors and insights. But right now, what I'll say with this is, what for the example, just using the deal that you mentioned, which for people that don't know, it was a trade with the Lakers that was rumored, or or, or I won't really say it was a trade offer. What's the word that I'm looking for? It was a trade suggestion um, of the Bulls making a move with the Lakers for D'Angelo Russell, um, Jared Vanderbilt, and Gabe Vincent. Now, what you are getting there is you're getting depth. Because keep in mind, in the Zach Levine trade, that basically means that AK, I'm um, that AK, that uh, that Kobe White and Io are your starting backcourt. So then you're getting two backcourt players in D'Angelo Russell and Gabe Vincent that can help contribute, and D'Angelo Russell's contract is expiring. So you're gaining some long-term cap flexibility going forward in years, and then that will coincide with Lonzo Ball's contract coming off the books as well. So then you can actually maybe be a player in free agency. Also, Jared Vanderbilt is a dog. He's not just a tall uh, Javante Green. He's not nearly as, uh, as athletic, but I think he's also a better on ball and more versatile on ball defender so you're also getting that for your team as well so i think you are getting more than what you let on are you getting the type of Cade cunningham and things like that deals no but you got to look at the the full ability of it when they make a zach levine trade it's not going to be for just who they get on that day it's also going to be for the added flexibility and things that it adds to the, for them in the future as well and i think that's the part that we also have to look at but otherwise i completely understand where you're coming from with reggie and we'll just see where this team takes it, man. But, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you guys are following the channel at Bull Central Pod. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns. BullCentralPod at gmail.com. Lastly, if you want to leave a text message and our voicemail for the mailbag, the number to do so, 773-270-2799. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related, thanks to you guys. And like I like to end every episode on, go Bulls. Love you guys. See right if you can, y'all. Peace. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Media.